Hello everybody. I know that many of you are thinking of traveling for longer periods of time and one question that comes up very often is how we afford to do that. So for us it was very clear that we do not have the money to both pay for traveling full time and at the same time keep an apartment and the rent for the apartment back home in Austria. So we decided to give up the apartment and sell all our things. But honestly, I underestimated a little bit how much work it would be to really get rid of everything instead of just putting it in a box and bringing it to a new location. In this video, I want to give you kind of the timeline view, so the chronological order of how things happened for us. And we're going to start more or less three months before we left the apartment. So one of the first questions that we asked ourselves is if we want to get rid of everything or if we're just going to simply put it in a storage somewhere and keep it there until we come back. So we decided to give up everything because for us chances are high that we will not return to live in Austria. At first we thought of keeping the more expensive household things like the nice fridge we had and the washing machine and the dryer. But at the end we figured before we pay for storage in Austria and then have those things transported to a new country in a year or two that probably it would be just cheaper to buy a new thing there. So all I own now fits into four boxes and one duffel bag in my mom's attic. Then I kept my car and I have a few things in there like the camping chairs and obviously I own everything that I brought with me in my carry-on sized backpack. And if you are interested in what I brought on this trip here to Brazil then just have a look at this other video that I did about my packing and I will link it down below. So after we made the decision to get rid of almost everything, we had to decide on the few things that we are going to keep. So I organized all the things I wanted to keep in modules. So just as an example, I have one module that includes all my winter clothes because I figured it would not be worth it to buy all my winter gear again if I come back home in the winter to visit my family in Austria. Then I have one module for all my long-term hiking gear and I have two more boxes with things that I wanted to keep that has all my important documents and some uh, keepsakes and other things inside. So the next thing I did was to create a schedule, so kind of a rough overview of what I wanted to do when in the next three months. And all those dates I noted into a calendar. Then obviously I marked the day X into the calendar, which would be the day that we were leaving and we would hand the apartment back to our landlord. So really make sure that you plan enough time for the end, because we thought we would give it two days for the renovations, but we were lucky that we added four days into the calendar because just experience shows that things always need longer than you expected. So after we planned for those days for the renovations, Basically, we had the day by when the apartment needed to be empty. So this gave us the day where all of our things and all the furniture and everything had to be out of the apartment because we did not want to move things from A to B all the time just to be able to paint and do other things. And in Austria, you are required to bring all the things you can recycle to a recycling center, but all the regular trash, every household has like a black container and they only pick it up every two weeks. So we looked up all the dates every two weeks and we tried to fill the trash cans as much as we can. So also make sure that you keep some time to solve all these bureaucratic issues that are coming up. So for example, me and my husband, with our age, we moved in with my parents because we needed an address for things like bank accounts and the car registration. So we made sure that we reserved some time for that. And then we made a plan for where we would go after day X was over and that was the best part of the whole thing. But now let's talk about what we did between those three months in advance up to like one month before day X. And if I can give you one tip here, then it would be try to do everything as soon as possible. Don't think, oh, I will do this later. Oh, I will do this later because there are so many things coming up that you just don't calculate with. So it's always better to just get the things done when you actually have time for that. So during the next two months, the thing we did most was decluttering. I always thought that I live very minimally and we only had a 50 square meter apartment without the garage and without the basement. So I always thought that we don't have that many things, but I was wrong. We have so much stuff. So the first thing I did was to reserve some boxes for my models and a few of them I was already able to pack and bring to my mother's place. For example, since it was summer, 
I did not need my winter things anymore. Afterwards, I tried to categorize my items into things that I can get rid of already and things that I better keep around until the end, like pots and pans and mattresses and all those kind of things. And we made the goal to not throw away too much things, so we really put in the effort and tried to find a new home for all our things. So the best thing that we did was to create a kind of flea market group on WhatsApp for our friends and family. It's possible to sign up for WhatsApp groups via a link. So we just created this link and sent it out to all our friends and families with the invitation that everybody who is interested in joining our little flea market should just please sign up via this link. And it was very nice because uh, we just, as we decluttered, we took pictures of the things, posted them in the WhatsApp group, and usually the things were gone within a minute or two. So people were really fighting over our stuff and it was lots of funny moments. So during those days, it was a very strange feeling to just get rid of everything. Nowadays, when I scroll through this uh, WhatsApp group, I don't even remember that I had all those things. And I was very surprised of who actually was happy with our old things. There were so many things where I thought, well, I just have to throw them away, like old drinking glasses. But there was a family with two small boys that obviously destroy lots of glasses, so they were happy to take them. So everything you can already get rid of, get rid of it. Another challenge obviously was documents and papers in general. I created a small folder with things that I really needed to keep the original, like birth certificates and those kind of things. And the rest of the documents I just digitized and stored online in Evernote. And it was very fast just by using the Scannable app. And then I shredded all the documents and just discarded them. Another thing that surprised me was the amount of pictures that I had everywhere. There's a few CDs with pictures and a few old sticks with pictures. So I just collected them all and uploaded them in my Google Photos and organized it there in albums. And then the nice thing was that I actually got to share these old pictures and the albums with the people who were there. So many of them were actually very happy to see those old pictures again. And surprisingly, the hardest thing for me was to get rid of books because it just feels strange to get rid of books. I think I collected books my whole life and I never got rid of a single book. And that is strange because I basically read exclusively on my iPad since years. So I'm not even reading physical books anymore, but still I kept them all around. So with things like novels and stories, it was easy. I just gave them to friends who were interested. With all the books I had left over from university, there was a place from the student union to drop off old books. And all the rest I made kind of um, thematic packages, like 35 productivity books and I sold them for a very, very reasonable price. And then the last thing that we had to do was obviously to cancel all our subscriptions. So we did not have a TV, so for us there was no cable TV or anything to cancel, but we had to cancel the internet and things like electricity. So we did really well and one month before we were actually more or less done with giving away all the non-essential things that we could get easily rid of. So now with only one month left to go, what we did was make a plan of how to sell our furniture and the essential things. We decided to give away all furniture except one dresser with a few drawers that we kept until the end. It was already a little bit battered up, so we did not feel bad about throwing it away in the end. And we were actually very happy that we kept it because it's very strange when suddenly every piece of furniture is gone and you have nothing to store anything anymore. So to make these things with selling the furniture easy, I created a page on Craft. Craft is my favorite note-taking system and I already posted a few tutorials about it. And one nice thing there is that you can share this page via a link that it generates. And I kind of made a rough timetable of which things I can get rid of first. So for example, it was not necessary for me to keep my dining table and the chair because we were just able to use the camping chairs and the foldable camping table that we have. And we sold the bed frame but kept the mattress. So I made it very clear when the pickup dates would be and I communicated that to all the people. And every time somebody was interested in my furniture, I made very sure again that they understood the pickup dates. And I was very pleasantly surprised because every single one 
came on time and it was no problem at all. There was only one person who did not show up, but I was able to sell this thing in the end, so no problem there. Sorry guys, it started to rain in the thunderstorm, so I hope it's not too much noise. <laughs> and then more or less two weeks before day X was when it got really, really busy. So my husband and I... My husband and I created very long to-do lists and just tried to structure them into the days and every night we would update the to-do lists and just try to get as much stuff done as possible every day. So during that time I really did not have anything anymore. We had nothing in our kitchen, there was no food, there were no pots, there was no silverware, there was nothing. So very luckily we had family and friends who invited us over for lunch and dinner during those days. And as I mentioned before, we planned to have everything done before day X, so that on day X we would just have to show up and hand over the keys. But again, things did not go as planned, so we had a few things left we needed to do on day X, but it was easily doable before our landlord showed up. And once this was over, we were just done. So these were a few weeks that were extremely, extremely stressful. So for me, it was amazing to see how many things I actually like accumulated during my life. And I always thought I'm quite minimal and that I only had a small apartment, but there were really so many things. So since the thunderstorm is getting worse, I think I should come to an end. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!